بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. So today, inshallah, we're covering the name of Allah, Al Khabir. Al Khabir is generally translated as the All Aware, coming from the root verb خبرة يخبر خبرة which means to know something intimately, to know through first-hand experience. Not that you're getting your knowledge from a second-hand experience, somebody's teaching you. No, no, that everything is first-hand experience. This is the word khibra itself, literally means experience. And al-khabir is uh, mentioned 45 times in the Qur'an. It's also interesting that al-khabir implies to have knowledge of something internally and intimately, and even you could say hypothetically or theoretically. So, um, like for instance, I may know something that exists but let's say if it were to be, I don't know, dropped from a certain height or, you know, put under certain amounts of heat, I might not know what would happen. The only way I could find out is if I did it and then had that experience and now I could know. And the whole idea is that Allah Ta'ala is Al-Khabir, that He has all of the khibra, like first-hand experience of every hypothetical situation. So, it, you know, whatever takes place in life or whatever could take place, Allah Ta'ala has the first-hand knowledge as if it actually happened. In that, of, in the in the most perfect knowledge, with the most perfect knowledge, Subhanallah. This is this is what it means to be Al Khabir, the All Aware, the All Knowing. Now, uh, in terms of, uh, like I said, it occurs 45 times in the Quran, five times next to the name of Allah Al Latif, and this is really interesting. Why should it show up next to the name Al Latif? Latif means the one who is subtle, right? Well, one reason is because being excessive, right, is a sign of someone lacking knowledge, whereas being subtle is a sign that you know exactly how much is necessary. I'll give some examples. Let's say you have you lack experience in preparing picnics. So what do people do? They pack way too much food, right? They overcompensate. They're like, I don't know how much everyone's going to eat, so I brought way too much food, right? So they were lacking subtlety, right? They just they op- they overstacked the, 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 the food. Why? Because they lacked experience and knowledge. So Allah Ta'ala is Al-Latif and Al-Khabir together. Why? Because Allah Ta'ala can be subtle, why? Because he is the most aware. Another good example of this, and وَلِلَّهِ الْمَثَلُ الْأَعْلَى But I just think, think, think it's a funny example, is you know, in kung fu movies, they try to show the super awesome samurai, whatever guy, the, you know, the best fighter ever, who's so experienced that he does the most least amount of movements necessary, right? Like for example, the, the, you know, the unexperienced fighter, he's like exaggerating and his punching and his movements, whereas the, you know, the, 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 the perfect samurai guy, the perfect fighter, whatever he is, you know, a punch comes to his face and he just has to slightly move and it just, barely misses him and he t- dodges to that side. And he just does these slight, slight movements. Why? Because he has so much knowledge of fighting that he doesn't have to be excessive. He can be as subtle as possible. So anyway, these two go together to imply what? That Allah Ta'ala doesn't need to be excessive to get things done. Allah Ta'ala is so aware that he knows how to get things done with, you could say, minimal effort and or with, with the least amount of, uh, you know, exaggeration or, 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 or uh, you know, work, etc. And so SubhanAllah, these two coming together, it really does paint a, a very interesting a picture. Another uh, a second perspective is what? That Allah's subtlety encompasses everything. And there's lots of things that we may not notice. Uh, you know, the signs of Allah Ta'ala, the evidence of Allah Ta'ala. Sometimes, you know, there are certain things that we notice and maybe other things that are subtle that we overlook and that it takes more time to pay attention and notice. Uh, uh, and so, yes, uh, this includes things that we don't understand, which is why it's known only to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala, who is what? Al-Khabir, the all-knowing, the all-aware. So yeah, there's lots of subtlety in this world that Allah, only Allah Ta'ala is aware of that we may not be aware of ourselves. And all these subtleties, Allah knows fully where. He is Al-Latif and Al-Khabir. So SubhanAllah, you see a connection between them. Now, four times in the Quran, you find that Al-Khabir is next to Al-Alim, Al-Alim Al-Khabir. Now, why are these two together? They both mean the all-knowing in a way, right? So when they are separate, when these two names are separate, you could say they have the same meaning of being all-knowing. However, when they're joined together, Al-Alim, is more specifically referring to Allah's knowledge of what is apparent and outer and actual, whereas Al-Khabir is referring to Allah's knowledge of what is hidden and inner and theoretical, and Allah knows best. And then you find that uh, 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 five times Al-Khabir, Al-Basir, they show up together. Why is that the case? Well, because Al-Khabir is a reference to inner knowledge, Allah knows your intentions of what you do, and Al-Basir, Allah is seeing of externally what you have done. This shows up five times in the Quran. And of course, Al-Hakim, Al-Khabir also occurs, how many times? It occurs four times in the Quran. And one implication, Al-Hakim meaning the all-wise, Al-Khabir meaning the all-knowing or the all-aware. The implication is Al-Hakim represents the wisdom with which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala operates in this universe. Allah ta'ala is operating everything underneath his wisdom. Whereas Al-Khabir represents Allah's knowledge of the potential, i.e. how everything could be uh, if Allah ta'ala had decided to run creation otherwise. 
it's the, uh, you could say, the inner knowledge of how it could theoretically be. So these are all these different names of Allah uh, that are associated with Al-Khabir. Now, the fact alone that Allah Ta'ala is Al-Khabir and the fact that He sent us revelation should make us so excited to learn and study the Qur'an. Allah Ta'ala says, Alif Lam Ra, Kitabun Uhkimat Ayatuhu Thumma Fussilat Min Ladun Hakim Khabir. Alif Lam Ra, this is a book whose verses are perfected and then presented in detail from one who is wise and all acquainted. Right? This is the first verse of Surah 11, which is Surah Al-Hud. Surah Hud. Now, what is the idea here? That Allah Ta'ala is saying what? I am the most aware of what revelation to send and how to send it and when to send it. This should make you obsessed with this Qur'an and the Sunnah of, uh, of the Prophet This should make you obsessed with this deen. Why? Because it's as if Allah Ta'ala is saying, I know absolutely everything. I know all hypothetical scenarios. I know everything there is to know. And I'm the one giving you this book. So trust me, it has what you need. You, this is what you need to know. SubhanAllah, this is, should make us so obsessed with Allah's revelation. How do we apply this name, Al-Khabir? Well, number, I have three main ways, inshallah ta'ala, just three, ma- three ways that I'd like to highlight. Number one is what? Be as aware or be as knowledgeable as possible, and you should have what? First-hand knowledge, not just depending upon others. And so specifically when it comes to Islam, you should not relegate yourself to depending upon scholars. You should what? You should learn the Arabic language so you can directly understand Allah's speech, Allah's direct speech to you personally. You should say, I'm not going to depend upon a translation. I'm not going to ask what the Shaykh says, this, that, and the other. No, no, I want to memorize this Quran and read it and understand the Arabic and appreciate it so I can have first-hand direct access to Allah's speech to me. This is one thing. And this is going to help you, inshallah ta'ala, differentiate between cultural and authentic Islam. Many, many Muslims, they have trouble and they struggle differentiating between what is cultural and what is authentically in Islam. We do not want to be like those who as Allah says, وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَوْا إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولِ قَالُوا حَسْبُنَا مَا وَجَدْنَا عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا Those who said what? And when it is said to them, come to what Allah has revealed and come to the Messenger. They say what? Sufficient for us is that upon which we found our forefathers. So what I'm saying is, have direct access to Qur'an and Sunnah. Now of course this ayah is referring to you know disbelievers, but you know, the, the lesson can still apply, which is what? That we say, no, 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 thank you. I don't need to directly access Quran and Sunnah. Why? Because I just depend upon my forefathers. You know, my parents practice Islam this way. That's what we do as well. You know, they, they had this understanding. They took from this, uh, you know, let's say fiqh or whatever the case is. They had these rulings and this is how, what they did. I'm just going to follow them. Why not take a look and see what the evidences are when it comes to what the Quran says, what the Sunnah of the Prophet says. Have direct access. Don't depend upon others. Uh, have direct experience. Yani imitating who or trying to get closer to who al khabir the one who is all aware number 2 there will always be people who misunderstand you right uh, but what matters is that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the truth and he's going to reward you accordingly the fact of the matter is the more truthful you are the more you call to this deen authentically the more you try to uh, invite to this way you're going to find that there will be people who oppose you there will be people who try to misrepresent you there will be people who try to uh, uh, you know um, character assassination try to destroy your image etc and so the fact of the matter is you should not be uh, um, uh, discouraged by their attacks and think, oh no, my, my image is tarnished and so forth. Allah knows. Allah is Al-Khabir. He's the intimately aware of all of your intentions. And so even if, you know, uh, those who are disbelievers and those who are hypocrites and those who want to destroy this deen, those people want to attack you, say, at the end of the day, I'm not doing it for them anyhow. At the end of the day, they don't judge me on judgment day. At the end of the day, Allah is the one who uh, will put me either in either paradise or hellfire. And as for them, I don't have to worry about them. So ultimately do things for the sake of Allah. He is Al-Khabir. Allah says, قَدَ نَعْلَمُ إِنَّهُ لَا يَحْزُنُكَ لَا يَحْزُنُكَ الَّذِي يَقُولُونَ فَإِنَّهُمْ لَا يُكَذِّبُونَكَ وَلَكِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ يَجْحَدُونَ Allah says, and we know that you, O Muhammad Sallallahu are saddened by what they say. We know that you are depressed about the way they are attacking you, insulting you, misrepresenting you, etc. And then Allah says what? But it isn't that they, it isn't you that they deny. Rather, it is the verses, it is the ayat of Allah that the wrongdoers reject. In other words, even if people try to, uh, you know, put you down, sometimes it's the case that it's just, it's not you, it's the truth that you're coming with that they're attacking. So, you know what? Leave their affair to them and, and know that Allah Ta'ala knows your true intent. The third point that I want to mention is what? That Allah Ta'ala 
is going to be the judge on Judgment Day, as we all know. And Allah Ta'ala is the most fit to be the judge because he is Al-Khabir, he's the all aware. And therefore, we should learn from this and recognize that when you are not fully aware of a situation, avoid making judgments. This is from, the, the Prophet says something very, very important in Sunan Abi Dawood, is an authentic hadith. al qudatu thalathatun. There are three types of judges. Wahidun fil jannati wa thnani fil nar. That one of them is in paradise and two of them are in the fire. فَأَمَّا الَّذِي فِي الْجَنَّةِ فَرَجُلٌ عَرَفَ الْحَقِّ فَقَضَى بِهِ Then as for the one who is in paradise, he is the one who knows the truth and judges accordingly. So that's what you want to do. You want to know the truth, be aware of the situation, then make a judgment. وَرَجُلٌ عَرَفَ الْحَقِّ فَجَارَ فِي الْحُكْمِ فَهُوَ فِي النَّارِ As for the one who uh, uh, knows the truth but is tyrannical and judges purposefully in the wrong way. Such a person is in the fire. And the third one is what? وَرَجُلٌ قَضَى لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى جَهْلٍ فَهُوَ فِي النَّارِ As for the one who judges, judges according to ignorance, then this one is in the fire as well. So this is the one I particularly am focusing on. Don't be like the person who makes judgments when he's unaware. Be careful of this and recognize that the, the only judge that's in paradise is the one who is aware, al-khabir. And then, of course, his judgment is, is just as well. You could say al-adl, which we're going to cover later, inshallah ta'ala. So anyway, these are the, uh, uh, these are the names. Uh, 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 this, this is the name al-khabir. And this is the, these are the lessons that we can take from it, uh, from this name. May Allah ta'ala make us of those who are constantly aware that Allah ta'ala is uh, all-knowing of what we are doing, is all aware of what we intend and what we do. Jazamdala khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.